Hey everybody, Rob Maurer here, and today we're going to talk a little bit about Tesla stock. We also have some interesting information on the battery packs for the 2021 model year Model 3, a Tesla tequila Easter egg, and then I'll give some of my thoughts on the Arkimoto interview that we had at the end of last week. Tesla stock today was down 2.6% to close at $410.36. That compared to the NASDAQ down 1.4% on the day. So I just wanted to briefly talk about this because so far this week, we've definitely seen some sector rotation due to positive coronavirus vaccination trial reports from Pfizer and BioNTech out of Germany. So we've seen assets shift over from tech stocks, for example, into things like retail. For example, Zoom stock this week is down 25% so far, while Macy's stock is up 18%. So we can see that in the indices as well, the NASDAQ is down 2.9% on the week compared to the Dow up 3.9% and the S&P 500 kind of in the middle at up 1% so far. So good and bad these days, Tesla is seen more as a technology company. And I think the logic here could be that Tesla's competition is less well prepared to deal with an extended coronavirus situation than Tesla would be. So theoretically a vaccination may be more helpful to Tesla's competition, therefore relatively weakening Tesla's position you could make that argument, but it's certainly not one I would agree with. I think more likely there's just that rotation and then Tesla kind of gets caught up in it. So Tesla this week down 4.6%, but these have been low volume days. Not really anything here to read into, in my opinion. All right, let's move on to the Model 3 battery pack. We do have an update here from a German forum, ttf-forum.de, which was pointed out over here in the US by Corio13 on Reddit. And basically the story here is that a German order holder has been sent registration papers and on those registration papers, the battery capacity for their 2021 model year Model 3 is listed at 82 kilowatt hours. So the pack capacity conversations are always a little bit difficult because there is always the usable capacity, the nominal capacity, and different sources seem to have different numbers for each. Generally, the Model 3 pack has been referred to as 75 kilowatt hours, but my understanding is that it's actually, from a nominal capacity perspective, closer to about 78. And then it looks like on this TFF forum that previously these registration papers listed the capacity as 79 kilowatt hours. It's a bit confusing. Some of the posts say 77, some say 79. So depending on how these registration papers were originally based, we could be looking at a 4 to 6% increase for the new long range version of the Model 3. This would fit with the reports that we had from Panasonic working on improving the energy density of the 2170 cells from Giga Nevada and that improvement was reported to start coming online sometime in September. With this 82 kilowatt hour report now, it does look like we're seeing those cells in at least the long range Model 3. But when we look at the improvements across the entire lineup, the situation is still a little bit confusing. So looking at the Model 3, we saw improvements in range of about 5% for the standard range plus when Tesla shifted over to the 2021 model year. The performance version also saw a similar roughly 5% increase but the long range non-performance almost increased by 10%. Aside from any new batteries, we also now have the integration of the heat pump in the Model 3, which Elon Musk did attribute to one of the reasons that the Model Y range was able to be comparable to the Model 3, despite being about 10% larger. So yes, the impact of that is going to vary based on your climate, but based on Elon's past comments, it does seem like the heat pump did impact the EPA test rating for the Model Y, so presumably it would have some impact here when being integrated to the Model 3. Making things even yet a bit more confusing is what's going on with the Model Y. Is that using these new, you know, roughly 82 kilowatt hour packs as well? Because when all these updates were happening, the Model Y also saw an increase in range of about three to four percent. Around that time, we also saw over the air updates from Tesla that actually increased the range for current Model Y owners. I don't know if that update improved the range for all Model Y owners or just those that had purchased more recently, presumably sometime in September or after. So hopefully from the comments today we can figure that part out. But interestingly, in the release notes when Tesla did push that update out to increase range, they attributed that to improved efficiency, specifically with the motors and climate control system. Anyway, long way of saying still two confusing things here. Why is the Model 3 long-range non-performance getting such a significantly larger increase in range than the other two models? And then has the Model Y always, or at least since September, had these new batteries and a larger pack? Or is there maybe still a possibility that as Panasonic ramps up production of that new technology, that it's being prioritized for the Model 3, perhaps to even out some of the demand imbalances between the Model 3 and the Model Y? Which, if that were the case, maybe there would be the possibility of the Model Y getting another boost to range with this larger pack. My gut says the Model Y is probably already using that larger pack as well, but let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. 
All right, moving on, just a couple more quick things here. The first is just kind of a fun story on Tesla Tequila. Obviously, we saw that unveiled last week, but Tesla actually for a while now has been displaying it in stores, a bit in secret. It's been hidden in the background on one of the stock photos. There's a house, and through the window, you can see the bottle of Tesla Tequila sitting on a table. It looks like that was first noticed by Brandon Flash on Facebook, so definitely a lot of credit there, sharp eye. And I think that'll keep all of us looking just a little bit closer at the promo materials that Tesla releases going forward. Tesla's director of product design, Javier Verdura, who has confirmed that he helped design the Tesla Tequila bottle, did confirm this on Twitter saying, quote, I forgot we dropped that in there. Can't believe you guys found it. Good eye, end quote. He did also share a nice other shot of a Tesla Tequila bottle that's actually been opened, so not just the stock photography we've seen on the website. If you're just listening to audio, that's on Twitter at Jay Verdura. The next little story here is from Waymo on Twitter. Earlier today, they tweeted out, quote, We've asked ourselves a lot of questions over the last decade. Now we want to answer the questions you've asked us about our fully autonomous technology, end quote. And that solicited a question from somebody asking, quote, Would you say that your technology is orders of magnitude more advanced than the more vocal competitor with a misleading brand, end quote? Waymo responded with a simple, yes. All right, interesting to see them even take that question. And it's not just like they're saying they're ahead. The question asks if they're orders of magnitude more advanced in terms of technology, and it also mentions a misleading brand when referring to Tesla. So Waymo responding yes is kind of affirming both of those statements. It'll be interesting to see if Elon responds to that or has any comments on Waymo in the coming days because that kind of seems like something he would jump into. All right, lastly today, I just wanted to give a couple of thoughts on the Arkimoto interview from the end of last week. A lot of you left really great comments and questions on that video, so I did just want to share a little bit of follow-up. As I said in that interview, I did make an investment. I do want to clarify, though, it's a very small investment. Arkimoto is still very early stage, so it's really just there to help me follow the company. And even though it is a small investment, them bringing in Sandy Monroe was a big part of that decision. I've got a lot of respect for them, and I think Mark, as a founder, is very interesting. He's coming from a different background, not just purely automotive, and I think he's taking a lot of the right steps, focusing on one platform, this Monroe partnership, getting himself out there in the Tesla community, and looking into a lot of these niches that may not be currently or planned to be addressed by electric vehicles quite yet. Personally, I'm not quite as bullish on the potential from a consumer perspective, though I'm definitely willing to be proven wrong on that, but I do think there could be quite a lot of potential in the commercial market, that's why I asked that question to Mark. And then it just comes down to the potential return on the investment. The market cap right now is relatively small, it's under $200 million. As Mark said, they're trying to grow production to 50,000 units per year over the next 18 months. That's pretty small volume, even at that level, and let's assume a $15,000 average selling price, that's $750 million in revenue. If you give a two times sales premium to that, that's a billion and a half dollars in market cap, and obviously that multiple could be higher. I'm sure they'll raise additional capital, sell additional stock, but I think you're pretty easily looking at a 5X if they're able to achieve that, which is certainly no given, but again, with Monroe involved, it's worth watching to me. All right, that'll wrap it up for today then. As always, thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and sign up for notifications. Make sure you're following me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast. I'll see you tomorrow for the Wednesday, November 11th episode of Tesla Daily. Thank you.